today's webinar, which is going to look at how AI is actually changing the life sciences and medical affairs. My name is William Solomon. I am actually the founder and the CEO of the Accreditation Council for Medical Affairs, or the ACMA. So we're going to give everybody about a minute to get started. But what, by you know, but in, as we're doing that, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about just so you kind of know my background and where I come from. So I spent about 15 to 20 years in the pharmaceutical industry, also worked in the management consulting space, working primarily within medical affairs. And, um, you know, for me, medical affairs is an area I'm very passionate about for those that know me. And medical affairs has changed tremendously, I would say, especially in the last uh, 10 years, where it's become definitely a much more strategic player within um, a lot of the discussions that are happening cross-functionally across a pharmaceutical organization versus, I think, in the past, where it really was relegated to more of kind of just the interactions that medical affairs might have with healthcare providers or key opinion leaders in particular, and really providing information you know via medical information or approving grants and those, that type of operational or logistic type of stuff but today it's different today if you're in medical affairs if you're a medical science liaison and you want to be ahead of the curve you want to be cutting edge you've really got to understand at a much broader level several different areas within the industry whether it's your competition whether it's digital tools you know whether it's you know kind of the interplay between devices pharmacogenomics and drug development all of that you really have to have a much much greater uh, perspective on and, and a deeper level of knowledge on so I think it's with that spirit, if you will, that I'm going to begin today's talk uh, looking at um, AI within medical affairs. So what we're going to cover today really is going to look at first AI and machine learning. There's a difference. So a lot of people don't realize when we talk about machine learning, machine learning is very different than AI as we're going to get into. And machine learning is playing a critical role actually in a lot of the work that we're doing to improve AI products and solutions. So we're going to get into that as well. We're going to talk about the applications of AI in the pharmaceutical industry. What are what are the ways in which pharmaceutical companies are using artificial intelligence? Then we're going to drill down deeper. We're going to get into medical affairs in particular, and we're going to look at what's happening within AI in the medical affairs space. We're going to actually show you some cool tools that we've developed in the AI space, and then we're going to do a Q&A to give you a chance to ask questions. So with that, we're going to dig into, and again, just start really at the basic level for those of you that maybe aren't as familiar with the world of AI in terms of what it is. You know, what is artificial intelligence or what is AI? And to think about it, I think at a very basic level, it's the development of systems online or computer systems that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. So if you think about things like um, machine learning, natural language processing, uh, think about computer-enabled vision, for example, and those types of technologies, all of that is AI technology. Now, when we look at machine learning, machine learning really is a subset of AI. So again, machine learning is a subset of AI, and it is ultimately the development of algorithms, statistical models that allow AI to be better that allows AI to get better and better at what it does. So it, ena it enables this performance enhancement, if you will, and it does this by learning data, right? The more data input that the algorithm has, the better it, be the better it is at being able to provide information in a more effective way. So really, the way to think of machine learning, is, because we're gonna refer to it a few times today, is that a a machine learning is a subset, again, of AI. It's a subset of AI, again, which is focused on algorithms that are used to enhance the performance of AI. And it's done when that algorithm is exposed to more data. So the more data that you have input into uh, particular algorithms, the better that the tool is going to be at providing information back to you. Now, we know within the pharmaceutical industry, of course, uh, you know, we have to work with the FDA and other regulatory bodies. I can tell you that I've had discussions with several regulatory bodies actually around the world around AI and machine learning, given the work that we do. And what I can tell you is the truth is, even though in 2021 alone within the FDA, there was over 100 applications for products that utilized 
AI or meta machine learning components, the truth is there still really isn't a clear understanding of some of the parameters around what's appropriate and not appropriate when it comes to using AI. Now, we know that the FDA has released guidance documents on the use of AI and machine learning for the development of products, whether they're software products, device products, or drug products, traditional you know drug development products. And if this framework is supposed to help drug manufacturers to be able to understand how to appropriately use the AI tools, the machine learning tools. Uh, ultimately, I think what the FDA is interested in is obviously how do these tools perform when it comes to real in the real world, right? How are they working in the real world? And so what they're really looking for is do pharmaceutical manufacturers have a plan? Do they have a plan to monitor the real world performance of these solutions? Um, you know, if you think about, for example, real world evidence, if you think about what happens in terms of us collecting data in pharma once a drug is commercialized, this is kind of the same thing, except here we're collecting a different type of data, right? Here we're talking about collecting data on how reliable, how accurate, how fair balance we're going to get into that is the data that's being given back to these organizations, whether it's external, whether it's internal, to be able to make proper decisions. How are these algorithms actually being developed? Are these algorithms taking into account a variety of dis different factors? Are there guidance documents that the company internally has developed around artificial intelligence and machine learning? Has that actually taken place? I can tell you from my discussions with many pharmaceutical companies, we work with about 200 pharmaceutical companies at the ACMA, and, and the reality is that many of them don't know. You know, it, when you, you talk to them, they're like, we really don't have a guidance. We don't have a policy. Um, and I think that's dangerous. I think in today's environment, especially how quickly things are progressing with the use of AI and machine learning, we definitely, definitely need to have some type of guidance, some type of parameters around what's the appropriate use of AI uh, within our organization, within medical affairs and, and other cross-functional areas as well. So, you know, again, the FDA has these guidance documents, you can find them online, but this is something I take a look at and, you know, ultimately determine is your company, you know, thinking about these things from a legal and compliance perspective and then working with the business owners to think about this as well. We know that the FDA is has acknowledged the growing use of, again, of AI and machine learning across basically the, the, the entire life cycle of drug development span place. And ultimately, the, the question is, what are the things you have to consider with AI? And one of the, I think, the biggest things when you really dig into the documents is the issue of generalizability. Is there too much leeway, too much generalizability in terms of the answers that are being provided back? Is there limited explainability due to the complexity of the AI as well? Is, or is the information fair balance? Is the information accurate? What is the source of the information? What are these algorithms actually being trained on? Um, you know, a lot of people in the public believe, for example, that ChatGPT is scraping uh, data off the web, but actually it isn't. It's trained on a proprietary database, which actually is different than BARD as an example. So this is important to understand because if you're if you're going to use that AI tool, it's important to understand the source of that data, where it's actually coming from. It's actually two different uh, things completely. So what are the standards ultimately for trustworthiness that I think any AI tool has to address? So if you're thinking as a pharmaceutical manufacturer, again, and I use that term in general, if you're pharma, biotech, devices, diagnostics, if you're in the life sciences and you want to use an AI tool, what are the things you should be thinking about? I think first and foremost, if you're using it for an external purpose, you know, for example, to augment your medical information services, are the responses fair balanced? Are they fair bot? If you're using AI conversational bots, for example, and it's relying on generative AI, are those responses fair balanced? Or are they not? Or are you going to take the data that you have, let's say, for medical information in your SRD and just spit that back out to uh, the provider? How reliable is it? Uh, when I talk about reliability, meaning if it's used over and over again, if that same question is asked over and over again or a similar iteration of that question, can I expect a reliably similar answer? Or is, it, or, is it, or is there going to be contradictions? And so those are things that have to be tested. Um, if I'm providing information, how private is that information, you know, in terms of where it's sitting on the server, how secure is it? Um, of course, addressing safety issues, security issues, and like we mentioned before, related to fair balance, bias mitigation as well. So that's, I think, as a, you know, when we kind of think about it at a, at a, at a kind of a hundred foot level at a macro, from a macro scale perspective, this is what we're seeing when it comes to the current landscape in AI.
right? There's these guidances that have been put out there by the FDA. The industry is very interested in using AI. But now for today's talk in particular, we really want to focus a little bit more on medical affairs. First, what are we seeing as some of the emerging trends within medical affairs? You know, what are we seeing that's happening within medical affairs and some of the major priorities that we see that are emerging? I think there's five. First is ultimately we know that the leaders within medical affairs, they play a critical role in helping to take these organizations to the next level. So being able to make sure that your medical affairs leaders are really thinking about how can the medical affairs organization help patients, patients' quality of life, and take their organization to the next level. You know, what I've seen sometimes is that pay, uh, medical affairs leaders are afraid they're afraid to make those difficult decisions. So I think we need to enable those leaders by providing the right training, by providing the right guidance, the right environment so that they can really make the best decisions possible ultimately for the benefit of the patient. Number two, integrating end -to -end data and analytics, and that's self-explanatory. Number three, differentiating medical strategies you know, for different purposes. Number th number four, aligning evidence generation with stakeholder needs. And then finally, orchestrating medical engagement in a much more harmonious way. And these, I would say, are the areas that I would highlight in particular that AI could potentially directly impact, okay? So when we look at uh, how to leverage AI for data and analytics, today if we look, currently, healthcare data, believe it or not, has reached a scale of two zettabytes in 2022. And the goal in the next uh, seven years is to be able to integrate these tools, to integrate AI in the day-to-day -day decision making, as I'm going to get into later on. A lot of organizations have yet to do this. Okay, and I think this is this is tough, right? Because it's a, it's a new ground for many of us. So this dynamic interplay of data analytics and AI in transforming um, operations in the space within medical affairs needs to be done in a seamless way. And we need to think about, you know, how on a day-to-day -day basis can folks within medical affairs, MSLs, how can they leverage these AI tools to make their jobs more streamlined, to be more effective, to be more productive ultimately in what they do, and to be able to serve again, ultimately their KOLs and their patients more uh, effectively. When we look at um, today, um, you know, what happens when it comes to AI being leveraged for evidence generation, believe it or not, only 20% only 20% of leading pharma companies have a cross-functional integrated evidence generation plan. That's it. It's 20%. So potentially AI tools can be used to think about how to streamline this, how to make this more robust, potentially, for example, using interactive dashboards, for instance, in MSL, uh, KOL uh, conversations for more dynamic interactions, for being able to provide information much more quickly back to KOLs, for being able to scan data, for example, and determine what are some uh, gaps when it comes to, to the medical affairs strategy and addressing certain gaps in the data or the literature. So these are all ways that I think we can do a better job of leveraging AI, being able to identify, for example, clinical trial sites, being able to better support patient support programs. Things like this, I think, are all ways that AI can really help uh, to make what we do a lot more effective. And if we look in terms of the ability for AI to orchestrate medical engagement, 60% currently of U.S. doctors or physicians state that integration, integration of pharma company interactions across digital channels were crucial to their experience, meaning that it made it, made it a better experience for them. We have to remember, and there's data on this, you know, in terms of um, what physicians prefer, what they uh, would like to see when it comes to interactions with the pharma industry. One, we know that they prefer interactions more with medical affairs, with medical science liaisons over traditional sales. We know that. And we know, number two, that they prefer to have information given digitally. And we see this, right? You know, we hear from a lot of companies that access is an issue. Um, especially post COVID. So things have changed. And so I think we need to think more and more about how can we leverage AI to get the information that we need out to our key opinion leaders that's going to help them uh, inform their clinical decision making, but at the same time still maintain that relationship building, which obviously is important as well. When we look at the goal for 2030, I think in increasing digital engagement by transitioning to new content formats. Again, new ways to deliver that content. 
You know, how do you deliver these small chunks of data, chunks of information that um, KOLs want, need, but in a way that really resonates with them? Okay, so again, one of the ways to do this potentially is developing compelling content that can improve their retention, capture their attention. And maybe we can do that somehow using AI. So what are some of the roles um, of AI in pharma that I see? Uh, so there's, there's a few. I think one is data extraction. So acquiring data, for example, from a source and processing it in a new context, or AI can be used, for example, to evaluate documentation and collect data. Preparing dossiers to be able to streamline, for instance, regulatory approval and submissions. Being able to streamline, for example, the MLR process, medical legal review process of either non-promotional or promotional materials. Automating some of those manual tasks. Um, looking at how we can use AI, for instance, to better analyze our interactions uh, as a field medical affairs organization with our key opinion leaders. What type of anal analytics, what, what types of insights can we glean so that we can provide more accurate, relevant information? Again, that going back to what really resonates with the key opinion leader. <clears throat> Excuse me. And also looking at data mining. So can we use AI? And this is already, you know, this has kind of been done now for several years, but how can we use now more of these sophisticated machine learning technologies to better leverage larger databases around the work that we're doing with either partners that we work with or, or our, our own internal data? And this is, you know, me preaching to the choir. As many of you know, one of the biggest challenges that I hear over and over and over and over again from medical affairs organizations is the challenge related to medical affairs insights. You know, we collect a lot of data, we collect a lot of information, but we can't somehow harness those insights the way that we want, where we could use them strategically to be able to make better decisions, you know, when it comes to our overall strategy. And I think this is where AI can help. I really do. I think ultimately better content management and organization. And I think finding information much more quickly, that's so, so, so important. If you look today, there's been studies that have been done by Deloitte, by others, BCG, that have looked at the amount of time that medical affairs, MSL professionals spend in looking for information. This is looking for information. So, you know, you're, you wake up in the morning, you're trying to find a clinical paper, an SOP, some type of scientific article, whatever it is, a slide deck, and you're rummaging through your share drive, you're looking at your desktop, you're trying to figure out where it is in SharePoint. That takes a lot of time. That takes a lot of time. And so I think this is where AI can play a really important role, potentially saving uh, you 20 to 30% of your work week just in being able to find information. And that ultimately is going to make you much more productive, be able to streamline processes, be able to better support your internal colleagues much more effectively, and be able to foster faster learning and development. I think that those are all important. So with that, I'm going to actually uh, ask Dr. Kiana Dixon to come onto the stage. Uh, Dr. Dixon is our Associate Director of Educational Programming. And, you know, here's the thing. In the end of the day, before I have her show these tools, so ACMA has two AI digital tools. We have AI MedInfo, which is a medical information AI-enabled language application model. Then we have MedAffairs AI, which is another AI tool um, that we use as well for, for with companies where they kind of work internally to use that to manage content and whatnot. Here's the thing, though. In the end of the day, okay, you could have the best tools, you could have the best support, but will you use the tool? And do you know how to use the tool effectively and compliantly? So I want to leave you with that because in the end of the day, if that is not happening, if you aren't, you know, using, actually using the tool and, and, and making, you know, leveraging it to the greatest degree possible, then it doesn't matter, right? So I think it has to be part of that day to day. And, you know, we believe with these two tools as an example that they can really be part of kind of the day to day and what happens um, with uh, medical affairs teams and whatnot in terms of what they do on an everyday basis. So with that, uh, Kiana, I'll turn it over to you. And, and like I said, Kiana is going to kind of go through these tools in a little bit more uh, detail. Perfect. All righty. So as as Will mentioned, the ACMA, we have two AI solutions specifically for the medical affairs team. And this afternoon, we'll take a look at both of them. Now, the first tool we'll take a look at is AI Med Info. Now, before we hop into this tool, just to give more background, a brief refresher on the medical information team. This is the team within the medical affairs department of a pharma company that plays the crucial role in ensuring not only 
accurate information, but also timely dissemination of that medical and scientific information as well. Right. And this information is usually related to the company's products. And this team, the medical information team, again, is responsible for resp responding to inquiries that come in from healthcare professionals that may come in from patients. Right. And then providing them with up to date and evidence based information about the company's products, the therapeutic areas and any relevant clinical data that the organization has. Now, during the DIA conference last year, data was presented on a comprehensive analysis of medical information processes, right? And they did this by examining the pharma company's med info websites. The data that was revealed revealed insightful trends on how medical information uses digital technology within their function. And remarkably, the majority of these web websites, as you see, they demonstrated a commitment to some type of stakeholder engagement. Right. With 14 of them, as you can see, featuring a chat function, 19 of them incorporating a document search capability on their website, and all of them provide a request form for their stakeholders. Right. So these findings that you see, they show the industry's dedication to facilitating that seamless and accessible communication between a pharma company and a stakeholder, right, involving with this well, aligning with the evolving landscape of the digital engagement that we want to see in the healthcare se sector. Now, based on this, the AI Med Info tool is an AI enabled solution specifically for medical information. Right? This is an integrated multi channel medical information system that will help improve customers' experience, a patient's experience, or a healthcare professional, and then allow for insights that drive value to the pharmaceutical company. And we'll show what that looks like. Now, here's how it works. Within this AI Med Info tool, we actually offer medical information through three separate channels, that multi-channel. So first being uh, CAN responses, right? Through a medical information chatbot. We upload a company's standard response letters or standard response documents, and the bot can then pull information and provide it verbatim to your stakeholders or to your customers. The second option is to provide an AI-enabled conversational bot, which can be very useful if you want that 24-7 support, where no matter what time of the day or what day of the week it is, there is, there is someone there available for your stakeholders, for your patients, and for your providers. And the last option is to have real live agents, right? Usually pharmacists to support your team and provide those answers. But what we found is that most questions can actually be answered by the bots. Right, that AI, but we have that human element, which is nice to have just in case. So let's take a look at the AI Med Info tool. What you're seeing here on your screen is what the AI Med Info chatbot looks like on a web page or an interface for a website. Before initiating the chat, the client is required to select their category and decide and choose whether you are a patient or a healthcare professional that's accessing this medical information bot. Now the chat outputs that are used when discussing and talking to the end user is then tailored and based on this chosen category, right? So if a patient joins into this chat pot, this AI Med Info and choose patient, they will have outputs and conversations told to them in the lay's language, right? That those without clinical knowledge is able to understand. Versus a healthcare provider, if they choose that they are an HCP here for this portion of the chatbot, their conversation is more heavy on clinical knowledge and clinical basis. Okay. You choose, again, whether you are a patient or an HCP, and then before initiating the chat one last time, the client then has to require, um, is required to select which product you are wishing to gather information or details about. Okay. Now, when a client makes an inquiry or they provide some type of comment within the chat bot, the AI Med Info tool has a language model and it's fine tuned to detect adverse events and product complaints, right? So an option will then be presented to the user if they would like to report such incidents, like an adverse event. 
right? So here looking at, at these examples that you see on your screen, a patient goes in, they choose the product metformin and they're asking the chat bot, hey, the other day I noticed the worst stomach pain after taking this, this medication. What should I do if I experience symptoms of high or low blood sugar? Right? The chatbot is able to provide an answer to the patient, but we also see a report, right? A presentation of an option to report that, hey, this may be an adverse event, right? So the tool has a feature of adverse event detection and reads that this question that was presented by the patient may be an adverse reaction to this medication. And this adverse event or this reporting of this event is very important to the medical information team, the medical affairs team, and the pharma organization as a whole. Okay. Here's an input from a patient after picking up the medication. I notice on the package label that the expiration date has already passed. Right. Here, we have the option to report a product complaint. Okay. Now, this is what it looks like for those reports. Remember this tool enables clients to report adverse events or product complaints, and they do that through a designated form. Right? Now, AI Med Info, just to sum up, includes support to the medical information team within medical affairs to ultimately improve customer engagement and the customer experience while simultaneously providing the medical affairs team with insights on adverse events, on product complaints, and also a process that ensures accurate and timely information across the board. Okay. Now, another tool that the ACMA has for digital solutions and AI is MetaFairs AI. MetaFairs AI is different than AI Met Info, and we will go into those details next. This tool is a cloud-based language application model which uses sophisticated machine learning algorithms. It is trained on the largest compendium of data in medical affairs, but this could also be trained on your company's data on top of that. Right? And we'll take a look at what that process looks like as well and why that's important. What can medical Meta Affairs AI do? First being augmenting MSL knowledge. Right? Medical affairs requires broad and deep expertise right, of your therapeutic area, your disease state, uh, a product right, more than ever. And with medical affairs AI, MSLs can now ask the AI tool any question that's related to the medical affairs function, right? Such as clinical trial designs, right? Pharmacoeconomic models, regulatory and compliance. But additionally, the tool can be trained again on all of your specific clin clinical data to help your team access information in seconds, again, about a specific product or a specific disease state. This tool can also help you to manage huge quantities of data, right? And how to manage that more effectively. So finding information can be a full-time job, like Will mentioned before. You can help your medical affairs teams find the information that they need from a reliable source that is specifically trained on medical affairs information by using the Meta Affairs AI tool versus relying on Google, right? Or a, another online source that can become risky can lead to negative outcomes when dealing with compliance. All right, so now let's shift gears and let's take a live look, a live demo at the MetaFairs AI tool. Okay. So what you're seeing here, this is the medical affairs AI tool that we have, and we will navigate through this tool together, okay? The external data side and the internal data side are two separate data sets. And we will go through each. If you remember, I mentioned that Medical Affairs AI, this AI tool, already is trained on the largest compendium of medical affairs data there is. All of that data is compiled and able to be used and searched and researched in the external data portion. Okay. Now, with that tool, with the external data side, we can ask it anything regarding medical affairs and the function of medical affairs anything from clinical trial competencies to building out your medical affairs strategy, right? How to discuss with KOLs, how to structure study designs, okay? Now let's take a look at what that looks like when we're accessing information in the external data side. Here I will ask a question on clinical trial technical competencies. 
And the first question I will ask is how is long-term cost effectiveness in a study's population assessed? Okay. When I click ask question, in a few seconds, we are provided an answer in the output side based on that largest compendium of data that is already fed into the tool. Okay. What will be provided to us is a very short, succinct answer that we will need just in case we need it really quickly at our fingertips. Okay. So as you can see here, we were provided our answer to how long-term cost effectiveness is assessed. And again, we have it provided to us in a list, right? very concise and easy. Now, an additional feature that this tool has is that you can now train the MetaFairs AI tool on your specific data also. And that is the internal data side. Okay. You can upload your SOPs. You can upload your guidances. You can upload clinical or scientific forms or documents or publications here as well. Anything that is related to your team, related to your company or to your specific products. So let's take a look at what that looks like. In order to train the MetaFairs AI tool on your specific data, we give you the power to make this AI tool smarter and to build upon its own knowledge base. Okay, And so you can train it using your own internal documents. Now, for purposes of this webinar today, I will upload the hypertension guidelines set forth by the AHA and ACC and I will upload it as a PDF file. So I chose one for my, my download here. Let's see. And we will upload it here into the document. What's important to note here within the MetaFairs AI tool, my Wi-Fi is a little slow, let's see. When uploading documents into the MetaFairs AI tool, you can upload any type of file, whether that's a PDF document, a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, you can even upload images, okay? Here for the purposes of this demo, I am uploading a PDF version of those clinical practice guidelines. But as long as there is text available within that document, the AI tool can preview the text, scan the text, and then become smarter and teach itself based on all of that text in that document, okay? So the training is completed for those hypertension guidelines that I just uploaded. Now this document is a 206 page document and it was uploaded in less than 60 seconds. Now an additional feature that we have with this tool is a content management portion. So here in the uploaded document side, we find all of the documents that I have uploaded and quote unquote trained this AI tool on my internal data. Okay, and we can find that all here. And all of the documents are uploaded on a cloud-based AWS or Amazon Web Services system. So we've taken a look at the MetaFairs AI tool and we've searched based on that external data side. But now that we have uploaded our own internal document, those hypertension guidelines, let's now take a look at the MetaFairs AI tool and see what the question and answer looks like for this internal data. Okay, so based on those hypertension guidelines, I'd like to ask the AI tool, what is first line for hypertension in a black adult patient? I click ask question and very quickly we are provided an output to us as an answer to our question. In a few seconds, we have a very short, concise, succinct answer to our question as well as a direct link to the resources that can provide us those answers. When I click on the resource, it now takes me directly to the document from which the AI tool pulled this answer from. Right. Again, being those AHA, ACC hypertension guidelines. Right, so now we have in one place a question and answer when we need something very quickly, we need something at our fingertips, and we don't have to go back to our original content management tool to hunt down and to find those answers ourselves. Like Will mentioned, the use of AI, it allows you to save time, allows you to focus more on products and tasks that drive value to you and your team. Now that concludes the demo for both AI MedInfo and MetaFairs AI.
and I'll give it back to Will and we'll take a look at your, your questions you have. Thanks, Kiana. Hi, everyone. So um, this is the Q&A portion. If you want to put your qu questions uh, in the chat box and, and I'll try to address them as best as possible. So I got a question here from Zainab Fatima. How is the output from external data different from ChatGPT's output? So if you're referring to uh, the MetaFairs AI, so the MetaFairs AI is actually trained on ACMA's proprietary database. So it's completely different, right? ChatGPT has its own database. What we did was we developed over these last few years the largest database that's proprietary to the ACMA in the world of medical affairs. So, and there's two components to the MetaFairs AI. There's like Kiana showed the internal and external. The external in this case would be ACMA's um, a proprietary database. Now we can add as a function social listening where you could do web scraping and whatnot. The internal is really the um, a company or our clients um, data. So what we can do is we can go to company XYZ and say, okay, we uh, give you the ability to be able to train our AI tool on all of your data. So they could basically, using an API, they can integrate all their data into the AI tool and the AI tool would be trained on their data. So this way, they can have basically all of their data stored in a one-stop shop. So this is unique, right? Because there is no, other, as far as we know, there is no other AI tool that's specific to medical affairs. So as a use case, an example, if you're a medical director, let's say, and you were you know, working on a clinical trial design and you weren't sure what kind of clinical trial design you should use in a particular situation, what you could do if you had MetaFairs AI, you can ask the AI tool, here's my situation, and you know which clinical trial design would be most optimal in this particular situation, in this therapeutic area with these you know, parameters. Um, you can also go back and ask on the other side of the AI tool, the internal side, you could ask for your company, you know, what was that study, you know, what was that percent reduction, I can't remember, what, was, what were the inclusion criteria for that study? So instead of having to look for it in the reference document, you can ask the AI tool and it would give you the answer. So hopefully, Zainab, that answers your uh, question. In terms of the quality of the evidence, so we do a lot of testing. A lot of testing has been done to be able to make sure that the data that we provide is robust, is reliable, and is fair balanced, especially when it comes to our AI MedInfo tool, which is a tool, as you saw, for healthcare providers and patients. So if they have questions and inquiries about a particular product or whatnot, they can go ahead and ask that question to the AI MedInfo tool. Um, so I got a question here um from christy meeks this, so do you need to join acma in order to access the acmai tool so um i think by join quote unquote i think you mean as a member so we're we're not a membership organization to clarify so this is a fee for service so what would happen is in order to access the ai tool the company would actually have to subscribe to the tool so it's a subscription-based annual model that's how it works so how to access it christy is that you would actually your company would subscribe to the tool and have it for you know the the organization so it's like an enterprise type of tool similar to how you might license you know microsoft office for example so that's kind of the same way and how you would integrate it so let's see what other questions here do we have One of the things too that you know I'll mention as other questions come in is related to uh, reference documents. So the other cool thing about this is if you're a pharmaceutical company and um, you want to use MetaFairs AI, well, like Kiana mentioned, what you could do is you could put all of your content into the tool. It gets trained on it, and then when you get when you ask it a question and, and it responds back with the answer to your question, it can actually show all the reference documents that it used to get the to get the to get the answer so if you wanted that as a feature you can always have that as well um so someone asks 
do we get an online participation certificate for the AI workshop? Thank you. The answer is no, there's no certificate provided here, but I would encourage you guys, if you're interested in being able to earn a certification and you're interested in learning more about digital tools and medical affairs, or one of the programs that we have that covers this area is the BCMAS program, the Board Certified Medical Affairs Specialist Program, which actually has a whole module on digital tools and AI and, and how that's being utilized in medical affairs. Um, another good question from Islam Masood. What about the privacy of the company data in the cloud tool? Um, okay, that's a good question. So all of our um, platforms are built on AWS server. So everything's on Amazon Web Services. Everything uses two-factor authentication. We use other platforms to ensure security. Um, given the fact that the ACMA is an accredited organization, we have to adhere to certain security requirements, even outside of the AI world. Um, so uh, AI ACMA, for example, we have users in about 80 countries. We have a lot of data on these users. And so because of that, we are required to adhere to certain security requirements and that extends to the AI platforms as well. So it is highly secure and what happens is, uh, let's say company X comes to us and, and they want to use MetaFairs AI or AI MedInfo, they would have their own kind of compartmentalized closed universe or environment. So that data is not shared across different organizations. Uh, so we got a good question here. To evaluate fair balance, what are the privacy and security measures in place? It's a really good question. So this goes back to machine learning. So what our developers do is they actually train, and data scientists and developers, they train the tool on different prompts and triggers in the data sets to be able to determine whether or not something, let's say, is an adverse event, something is you know, an efficacy statement, and to, to balance that statement, let's say, with a safety statement. So you can use machine learning to actually enhance the responses uh, from the AI tool. The AI tool is actually smart enough to be able to recognize if you train it, what's a response that's related to efficacy. Excuse me, what's a response related to adverse events, so forth and so on. Let's see. Um, How will the AI tool differentiate between different levels of evidence, randomized control trials, open label, expert opinion, et cetera? This question comes in from David Chang. That's a really good question. So um, the answer is that the AI tool from the external perspective, which would be the um, ACMA proprietary data that you'd be utilizing, uh, it depends on how the question is asked, but based on the you know the tests that we have done, it can differentiate by understanding the different levels of evidence. It can also differentiate when you're if you're using actual clinical papers, let's say from within your organization, and be able to summarize that data back to you. It really ultimately depends sometimes, quite honestly, on the prompt and how that question is asked. Uh, I would you know in full transparency, I wouldn't say that's a hundred percent. Um, you know, down pat, so to speak, when it comes to the internal data, because sometimes the AI uh, is providing that data back as a summary, maybe as a summary of different studies. Uh, now, if you ask the question, you know, provide me with um, a summary of the literature in, you know, type 2 diabetes with GLP-1 agonists, I'm making this up, um, and, and, you know, and rank the level of evidence, you know, using most rigorous to most uh, to least rigorous evidence, levels of evidence. In that case, it might give you back um, that information and differentiate the levels of evidence. Um, so Ahmed Haddad says this, the citations features is key to address the common concern with all chat. Yeah, I agree. With, and that's a really good point. Um, that are, those are definitely, definitely major concerns with some of these platforms today with ChatGPT or with BARD with the hallucination issues. And, and that's the good thing about what we're doing. It's a much more controlled environment. And I, I can't recall if Kiana mentioned it, but we also have controlled levels of, um, of uh, access. So you can control level of access of the user. You can control the source data and what data you actually want to show and what you don't. So for instance, let's say for argument's sake that you didn't want to have anything off label in your AI MedInfo platform. Um, and as you guys know, you know, you can show off label information if it's it's an unsolicited request by a healthcare provider, it's documented, et cetera. 
But let's just say you didn't want to do that. Let's say for, for you know, you want to be extra conservative and you only want it to show on-label information. You'd be able to do that by being able to limit the, the uh, pool or universe of data. Um, so again, we have another question related to privacy. So again, in terms of data privacy, uh, when a co company uploads confidential information, it's what I referred to earlier. So everything that we have here is two-factor authenticated is on AWS, so it's highly secure. Um, and, and, you know, we use the same security precautions that we would use for any of our other platforms. So that's not something that I would be, you know, concerned with. Of course, unless, you know, Amazon Web Services goes down, <laughs> which is unlikely to happen, but, you know, it can happen. Um, otherwise, outside of that, it really is unlikely for, for, the, for the platform to get hacked or anything like that. So we put in, you know, those security measures in place but you know we, we can't say it's 100 percent. nothing's 100 percent. i mean but we do our best and um it's something that's you know is constantly being looked at and addressed can your external databases access citation databases like medscape and pubman that's a really good question zane the answer is yes so that would be on the external side so like i was mentioning earlier with the uh, metafairs ai tool you can use it to um, access the ACMA's database, but you can also add to it, right? So as a plus, you can add the social listening component where it can do uh, web, scra web scraping of things, databases like, you know, Medscape or PubMed and others. Um, can we integrate the AI to assess medical legal cases? Um, this is not something we have tested. Um, that's not really necessarily a use case for medical affairs in general. If you're talking about individual patient uh, cases, um, just because of, of the of the HIPAA issues, at least in the U.S. So um, I want to be cognizant of time. Uh, it's about 45 minutes past the hour, but this has been great. Uh, these questions have been fantastic. I want to thank Dr. Keanu Dixon for um, providing a fantastic overview of the ACMA AI tools. I want to thank all of you. Please make sure you visit uh, our website, medicalaffairsspecialist.org. You can also just Google ACMA Medical Affairs. Reach out to us if you're interested in learning more about the solutions that we offer to the life sciences space. And with that, I wish you guys a great rest of the day. Thank you, guys.